Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome back to uh, Scum and Villainy here on Know Your Role. Uh, let's quickly do introductions for everyone. I'm going to go by the order I can see people down on the bottom. Uh, Hidden Trader, <laughs> tell us Hi, who you um... are. Sorry. No, it's okay. My name's Shannon. Um, I don't Twitch or stream much, so you probably won't find me. But um, yeah, this is my first time playing a game on Roll20. And I'm still learning the scum and villainy. So. And just remind us uh, your character. Uh, my character is Kit Ramos. She's a mechanic on the ship. Brilliant. And Seda? I'm Theta. I'm running the stream. I'm also Byron Fang, the mystic. I do things mystically with the way. <laughs> it is nice. the way. Uh, Griff? Hey, yeah, I'm Griffin. I go ahead and participate in these streams. You can find more of me here and over on YouTube, the uh, place that we post all of these. I'm playing Edwin Rockwood the Seventh, a dashing young nobility. Amazing. And last but not least, uh, Lessons. I'm a daytime streamer. Uh, I, I'm streaming right now uh, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. I also play uh, Rick Brazau, who is a scoundrel, uh, who's about to lose all his money that he doesn't actually have playing <laughs> holographic cards because he's a moron. An adorable moron, but he's a moron. Amazing, amazing. I'm looking forward to that. I will take your money gladly. Uh, of course, uh, I am your Space Master Muffin. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Muffin Manifesto, but we'll talk about that at the end of the stream as well. Uh, I play on a bunch of uh, role play streams now, apparently. Um, and I am excited to get back to this game after a hiatus. Uh, I apologize that we had to go so long between games. I had to move states, and that proved to be way more complicated than I was expecting it to be. Um, but let's jump in. Now, at the, at the end of last session, we uh, ended somewhat abruptly, and so we did not do uh, experience for everyone, and you guys need to get some experience. Uh, which is perfect because it will allow us to uh, recap what happened last time. Um, astute viewers will notice we are down a player. Unfortunately, uh, Toad is no longer able to do this time slot, but uh, we will work out how to uh, write him out together. Um, so, who remembers what happened last time? Anyone want to volunteer for a bit of a recap? Well, I guess that usually falls on me. Here's mm -hmm. to the best of my knowledge uh, what happened last time. Mm -hmm. We were sent to a planet to do a delivery, and in the bar we found the person we were supposed to deliver uh, our object to was uh, already dead. We yep. had a little bit of a fight with a nobleman and his, and his assassin, uh, managed to wiggle our way out of the bar and into a motorcycle chase across the city. Mm -hmm. uh, our friends on the ship had some interactions with a scientist that we are now faring off planet, and mm -hmm. our uh, what 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 would be the proper term? I'm I'm trying to not say Jedi. I guess like person of the way. And our <laughs> captain had a big fight with the assassin and the motorcycle gang uh, that ultimately led to our escape and the captain being grievously injured and stressed out. Uh, we then left, and I believe we're on our way to go visit some pirates uh, who we are smuggling this scientist out to. We also discovered the object that we uh, were carrying with us is actually a sentient cube. Oh, yes. And now I guess he's like our ship mascot. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, actually... Our engineer adopted uh, oh, it, yeah. so, you know, it's it's part of the crew now. We can't get rid of it. That's right. Um, that was a, a fairly accurate uh, recap. Um, I don't think the crew knows who uh, the, the scientist Junior. I don't think anyone. He, I don't think he's told anyone who he needs to get to. Just the the planet that he wants to go to, which is uh, Voss 
in the Holt system, uh, yes. which is sort of like good for you guys anyway, because after that dust up on Warren, uh, getting out of the IOTA system is probably a good plan. Um, and uh, yeah, our sort of like last uh, little scene was you guys uh, approaching the gate, which actually has a cool name. I'm going to see if I can find it. There's a special gate um, between the two systems. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, the... the uh, Maybe they maybe they don't have a special name for them. I think they're just named after the two systems that they go between. The Rinholt Gate, yeah. There we go. Yeah. So you guys, um, we we saw for the first time, uh, the Red Baron, which is the name of your guys' Star Dancer class ship, uh, take off, and uh, we saw it uh, arriving in the Holt system. So. Let's um, let's quickly do experience. What we'll do, I think, just because I know you guys are fairly new to the way in which uh, experience works in Forged in the Dark games like Scum and Villainy. We'll start with the crew itself because the um, each of the characters earns experience individually, but so does the crew as a whole. And uh, that's how you get like upgrades to your ship and other special crew abilities. So I'm going to ask you some of these questions from the from the start answer playbook. And uh, for each item below that happened, we mark one experience. Or if it occurred multiple times, we can mark up to a two experience. You can't get more than two experience per experience trigger so did you guys execute a successful transport or smuggling operation during the last session i believe no actually mm -hmm. All right, we picked the guy up we got away that's successful right mm -hmm. yeah the original mission was sort of failed from the start but i mean we got there with the thing and Wait. we got it uh from falling into other people's hands what was our original mission again uh deliver <laughs> the box so, I, I was mean, about to say, and and one died except for wait. Yeah, I forgot that picking up Junior wasn't our mission, which is something we did. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Well, th this was like the in media res, right? You started at the place with the thing, but the contact was dead. So you know, it's a bit of a fail state starting, but that gives you the. Uh, it's just, yeah, I think I think there's an experience worth of like transporting. You know, you didn't just give up the cube to the Turner Society when they said give up the cube, yeah. and you also took Junior on board and got him out of um, out of Warren. You haven't like fully finished off that mission, but he he gave you uh, half half of the payment up front. So I'm going to give you guys one experience here. Um, for that one, uh, did you contend with challenges above your current station? Yes, <laughs> I'd That's... probably say after contending with the assassin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the great part about um, this experience trigger is at the beginning of the game, it's very easy because you guys start as a tier zero crew inside a you know small ship. And you guys dealt with, uh, I think, so the Turner Society are a tier, I'll look at the oh, stuff. Yeah, so they're a tier two faction. And you also were, um, you also got into trouble with their cronies, the Dyronet gang on Warren. Um, yeah, so I'm going to give you guys two experience there because, uh, you came up against like yeah, a, a seasoned assassin and a gang of bikers, and managed to get away with only one casualty by the sounding by the sound of it. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, 
Now, when we created the crew, we established that your reputation is as a daring group of smugglers and illicit merchants, blockade runners, etc. Uh, did you bolster your crew's reputation or develop a new one? Do we feel like we were daring during the last session? Well, we started a bar people. fight, a street <laughs> race. Uh... Pink scratching to buildings. Nearly made, could have made it out of the, uh, the planet before the planetary control realized that we were supposed to stop us. <laughs> yeah, I think that yeah, qualifies. I think so, too. I think there's easily two experience worth of, of daringness in there. And then finally, this is the most uh, esoteric trigger, and you guys get to, you know, sort of, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Lobby for, no. Um, oh, it's so close. Never mind. You guys get to sort of uh, barter for experience here. Did you guys express the goals, drives, inner conflict, or essential nature of the crew? Well, I mean, it's the first episode. Our nature has to be expressed in this episode. It was the only way That's that it point. could have been. Mm -hmm. That is a good point. I mean, we went full on ragtag, full of misfits in a situation. So mm -hmm. I guess that's an expression of who we are so far. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think as far as like a first session goes, I got a pretty good um, feel for like, how the crew operate together as much as like, the, you know, we got to see that, you know, you guys do, e even though you have, you are yet to complete a operation, we got to see what you guys are about trying to deliver illicit goods and smuggle people and that kind of stuff. So I think there's a, a, at least one experience. Do we think that was worth two experience of, we literally we defined who our characters were. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give you the second experience, um, which actually means you guys are only one experience away from a advance on your ship as well. Mm. So uh, you will almost certainly get an advance at the end of this session. <laughs> Medical bay. <All> right. <laughs> <laughs> <Our target's gone. laughs> Well, I mean, one of the cool things about this kind, of the, this kind of system is that you can go and find a doctor if you need a doctor. You know, you don't need That's to. True. You don't necessarily have to have someone. On I mean, in the famous words of Will Smith, "Don't start nothing, won't be nothing." <laughs> <laughs> this is also words to live by. Um, so uh, let's go in the same order, which I will try and remember despite not having it in front of me. Um, hidden, hidden. Uh, talk me through your character's experience triggers. They should be at the bottom of your, your character sheet. I think on roll 20, they're just on the left-hand side under yes. your split abilities. Okay, okay. They were advancement, I think, yes. Gotcha. So, desperate action, that's like at the time, um, you addressed yep. a tough challenge with technical skill or engineering. Uh, not I I remember you hot wiring some motorbikes. Oh, uh, I guess that's true. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's definitely one experience worth. Um, was it? Do, do I put that? Sorry, here on the advancement. Ah, uh, so you can either put so uh, you guys can either put that into playbook advancement. Okay. Uh, which re which requires eight experience to get uh, a new special ability from the list, or you can put it into any of the individual tracks, uh, insight, prowess, or resolve above uh -huh. um, your abilities, and you only need six in one of those to get a new uh, like dot in that category. Okay. So if you want to upgrade your action ratings, you should put them there. And if you want to get new special abilities, just put it in playbook advancement. If you're not sure, just put it in playbook advancement for now, and you can always reassign it later. Okay, cool. Um, you expressed your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background. Um, not really. I wasn't really vocal this first one. Um, 
we we did i i liked in the the scene because I, I mean it this is sort of uh like a meta trigger as well we we talked about how your character is like really interested in like er artifacts and stuff um, and then when we yeah. saw the cube uh open up and like uh kit's eyes light up and that kind of thing <laughs> i think there's i think there was like a um that was an insight into their beliefs and their th the things they're interested in also you guys like had this job did it was, was this job oh no this job you guys got through your crew contact didn't you the mm -hmm. the info broker it wasn't directly through the cobalt syndicate which is i know that's your part of your background yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, and then the last one, you struggle with issues from your vice or traumas. I don't have um, traumas, and like my vice came up because it's the weird um, being impacted to these earth, uh, artifacts, mm. um, but I haven't struggled with anything from it. So yeah. I think that's, that's fair enough. Yeah. Okay, right. uh, cool. We'll go with two experience for the for that first one. Um, all right. Uh, next was Theta. Talk to us about Byron Fang. Ah, you addressed a tough challenge with wisdom or the way. Yeah, I mean, I literally used the way to redirect blaster bolts from attacking the whole party. Yeah, we we definitely got uh, to see what it is that Fang does, and we um, yeah, we saw you using your your special uh, night speaker artifact as well, right? So yep. You holding your breath to walk through. I'm glad you said Night Speaker, because from my head I was thinking Night Sisters, because I got too much Star Wars on the brain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are legally distinct from Star Wars here. Yes. Yeah. It's common villainy. Um, it is the way, not that way, but it is the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and your next experience, you got? You expressed your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background. I mean, I did go at length to the, the gang trying to figure out who they are and talk to them about what they want and believe in because that's my way to know everything about all the people that I encounter along my life's journey. Yeah, that's right. I remember there was that scene where you were just like distracting one of the bikers just by like sort of chatting to her and she was, and she was like, aren't we meant to be like capturing you and your friends? Yeah, I'm just super just... not good at this. <laughs> All right, I'll take an experience there. And did you struggle with issues from your vice or traumas during the session? I think the problem there is that the word struggle is in that sentence. I didn't struggle with it. I mean, I did, while we were all running to get on the ship, stop and collect a rock because it's my vice. I got to observe the you know particulars of the way that I've traveled. But I'm not sure that it caused you any struggles just yet. The opportunity was there to struggle. You just didn't take it. It... I think part of that was uh, timing as well. I think we were right at the yeah. end of the session. Um, this is a, a reminder for, for everyone in some ways that, like, if you guys want this experience, just bring up your vice at inappropriate times. Like, fi find a way for it to be a problem for you or for everyone, and you guys get experience. It's, a, it's one of my favorite parts of like Forge in the Dark Games is the way the experience works is that it, it encourages the players to add complications to the story. And so unlike a game where like Dungeons and Dragons, where if someone said, oh, I want to stop to pick up this shiny rock and waste four turns of my initiative and looking at it and learning about its history while the rest of my team get blasted by fireballs in this, like that's how you get the experience. And so whilst the characters might have a problem with you stopping in the middle of a fight to pick up a rock, the players won't because it, it's, uh, this is how we uh, advance. Right. So an incentive to follow through with certain actions. So lessons yeah. and I need to start doing impromptu uh, duels in the middle of the street. <laughs> you have your if deck like... ready, right? Yeah. And that's the only way we're going to figure out who's captain now, right? <laughs> um, oh gosh, that's of... what our, our downtime is going to be, I think. 
<laughs> Speaking of Griff, talk to me about uh, Edwin Rockwood the seventh or whatever All number right. it is. So, yeah, the seventh. Uh, so let's take a look at what we got here. So we already did the desperate actions; those are already on the sheet. Uh, address tough challenges with deception or influence. Uh, I think we have two instances of that. Maybe, maybe three. One would be uh, the bar fight, which we mm -hmm. caused. Uh, the other one was literally getting on top of the car and trying to lie and distract the motorcycle gang and say like, "No, no, 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 no! You've been lied to. They're after me. I'm the valuable one here." Uh, the That's third one might have been like encountering our noble adversary and trying to talk him down somewhat. Uh, that one is probably like the weakest of the three, but the other two are pretty strong. So what do you uh, think? I, yeah, I definitely think between those that that like we saw you that your go-to mode to solve things is deception or influence, and we did see it multiple times. So you can take two experience for that one. Okay, I'm gonna start stacking all of this into uh, resolve because I want to get that tier two command as soon as possible. Nice. Uh, express your beliefs, strives, heritage, or background. Uh, that probably is best exemplified with the getting on top of the car and going, it's like, no, no, take me instead. Uh, yeah. Using his entire background to it and saying, like, look, I'm valuable, look at me. Yeah, I think we got um, enough throughout that episode to, to be like, oh, yeah, Edwin is a noble. Like, we, we got to see the difference between what it is to be a noble uh, in the system, even one who's on the outs like Edwin is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then struggle with vices or traumas. Well, they didn't have any trauma coming in, and we didn't get to the vices. That's what yeah. this episode's for. So now, my my um my uh sort of house rule for for how that trigger works in terms of trauma, because obviously you guys don't start with any. Um, and that is deliberate. That is like built in as, you know, it's, you, you can drive towards getting your first trauma or two as ways to get yourself experience. Um, but my house rule is also like the session that you get your first trauma or, or when you receive a new trauma, that counts as a, as a tick for that experience trigger. So I'm just saying it's all not right. always the worst thing to, yeah. to lose, to, to, to use all your stress. <laughs> Um, cool. Well, we, we will probably see more of your guys' uh, vices in this session because we are going to start with downtime. But before we do that, uh, let's jump over to lessons and uh, Rick Brazel, talk, talk to me about your experience triggers. Well, I did a lot of uh, piloting roles. I think at least I got one every time you roll this production, mark XP in that action attribute. How many yep. I got? I I don't want um, one. I think at least at least one. Usually, yeah. Usually we mark those uh, as we go. I'll, I'll have a quick look through our um, our log in roll twenty to check that we because because we always mark when it's desperate. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, talk, let, let's talk through the other triggers now. And not... yeah, okay. you address a, a tough challenge with charm or audacity. I think I did that because essentially when the assassin just sort of up was like. Ah, screw it. And I shot him. Like, you know what? I don't care who it is. I don't care if they have this guy in the back. I don't care. He tries to intimidate him. He's like, nope, that's not going to work with me. I yeah, know. nice. I think that was yeah. pretty audacious. Yeah. You express your belief, drives heritage, or background. Um, not yet, I suppose, uh, except for the drive to survive. But I guess that's common to everybody, at least most everybody. And you struggle with an issue from your advice or traumas during the session. Aside from getting wounded, grazed, I don't think I had anything that, that triggered my advice. I should have been looking for a game of hollow challenge or something, but I didn't. Of Luna Dark Beast, actually. That's the name of the game. So, um, mm -hmm. so I think it's the, the top two. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That sounds about right. So mark two, two experience. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I've had a look through Rick. You had one desperate role right near the beginning, which was to scrap with the assassin. I think Edwin and Byron both did two desperate roles. Yeah, I marked them as I was going, and I have two listed. Mm -hmm. Cool, that's the best way to do those, by the way. And I'll, I'll try and 
a desperate roll just to mark the experience as we as we do them. All right. So um, I think like where we pick up back with the crew is uh, the camera fades in. Now the the start answer the Red Baron. You guys don't have a medical bay right now, do you? You have a a galley. Mm -hmm. um, so where 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 is the giant gorilla body on your ship? <laughs> because uh, Captain Rado is dead, and the four of you are standing around this big gorilla body where in the ship is it uh cargo bay. Is right in cargo bay yeah as soon as we came in he just he's too big collapsed. Yeah, yeah. yeah if i recall <laughs> right the hard suit locker here is airtight yeah yeah you guys have uh but by default you have a a, a cargo hold and smuggling compartments on this on the start answer if we don't need to hide his body also you wouldn't no, want to put him in an airtight compartment because that'll just let the Bacteria eat away <laughs> at him. It'll be horrible to open later. Just keep him in right, the exposed. Right, but that not be open air. Well, just keep him in the exposed to space part of the ship, and that way he'll just freeze dry. Uh, yeah. So the four of you are standing around. Um, I'm, I'm imagining uh, Rado's body on like a big like hover trolley or something that you use to move cargo around in the bay um and uh how, how are you guys going to determine who the captain is? this is the question not it i call not it <laughs> <laughs> well i think uh lessons as i have uh, a way to settle this matter <laughs> by oh, indulging uh... in our vices <laughs> Well, I think yeah, I think there's like a moment where you're the like the first shot is the four of you just like staring down at this body, and then we hear um, we hear the voice of uh, Junior, the the scientist who you guys are um, transporting, and he he says, "Oh, oh my, uh, uh, so the captain is dead then." Yes. We just all turn and like glare at him. <laughs> that, that would be positive on that account, yes. Um, Expired. And, and so, um, what 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 happens now? Will, will you still take me to Voss? Well, of course. I mean, we have a contract with the crew. Right. We need, Good. we need to get out of here, so it's, you know, if it's And enough. so... Which one of you is the the captain? Edwin quietly pulls a tricorn hat out, unfurls it, and puts <laughs> it on his head. <laughs> I believe I'm the captain now. I believe we need to play for it. <laughs> it's time to duel. I'm sorry, oh, there you, you just pull out a Magic I'm the Gathering the card? <laughs> yes. That's brilliant. <laughs> Um, cool. Well, I mean, if you want to, if you guys want to use this as as your vice, uh, we absolutely uh, can. Um, now, if I understand correctly, for you, Rick, the vice is like playing the game itself. But for for Edwin, it's about betting high on high stakes. Games, right? Yeah. So, is this is, is the high stakes here? Who gets to be the captain? Yeah. Yes, I'm totally willing to lose my ability to be the captain to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so you guys are both going to be making indulge vice rolls here, um, which will be your so so the way downtime works is each person will get two downtime activity. Um, mm -hmm. The list includes indulging a vice to reduce stress, uh, acquiring assets which are like temporary, usually one use things that you can uh, use for a particular mission. Um, you can craft, you can sort of rig or hack together things uh, that you want. Um, lay low, which will reduce your, your heat uh, for one of the systems that you're not currently in. Um, recover any harm that you have. 
uh, repair the ship if it's damaged, uh, train in one of those experience tracks that uh, we talked about, uh, or um, do uh, start working on a long-term project. Long-term projects are sort of the place where players get to sort of break the rules as much as uh, as they are interested in. Um, if you want to do a long-term project to, you know, uh, create a uh, matter transporter or something, you can do that. It will probably be a difficult long-term project, but if you start working on it, maybe you can learn how to teleport. Hmm. Literally anything you can think of can be a long-term project. Have to conquer the um, galaxy. <laughs> that that's probably more like uh, some action that needs to actually happen. Uh, it could be, I guess, like a sixty-segment clock or something like that. <laughs> All right, but we're going to start our downtime uh, with a very appropriate indulge vice uh, clock here. Uh, sorry, uh, roll here. How do you guys want to determine who actually becomes the captain? Do you guys just want to pick, or do you want it to be who take who who relieves the most stress out of this role? Do you want it to be uh, just? Do you want me to flip a coin? Let's let's do who relieves the most stress. I think that sounds fun. What do you think, lessons? Sure. So to indulge your vice, there is actually a button on uh, the character sheets where you just click indulge vice. I see it. Um, what that will do, it will roll your lowest attribute between insight, prowess, and resolve, um, which for you guys is probably one or zero dice. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think for Edwin, you'll be rolling one dice because you have only one dot in insight. And Rick, you're going to be rolling zero dice because you have zero dice in insight. What that means is that you roll two and take the lowest, whereas uh, Edwin will be rolling one and taking that. Okay. All right. I'm willing to hit the button. Okay. Both of you hit it. That is a three. Right. I play Dark Fire Soldier in defense <laughs> mode. I'm trying to click the button, but the button doesn't do anything. That's because I use Fisher to destroy your weakest monster on the field. <laughs> okay. I, I'm literally pressing the button and nothing's happened. You, you've clicked the indulge vice button? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. It should pop up with like a little uh, window that says bonus dice. Ah, okay. And then you yeah, just got to click submit. No, yeah, yeah, no one gets bonus dice. Up. I must have just like been hidden. Oh, oh, it's a tie. Well, it's a tie. So before before we get into what the hell that means, uh, both of you relieve uh, three stress. So lower your Very stress nice. by three. You did both of you have more than three stress to begin with? Uh no, I had no. five. I'm down to two. Yeah, I looks two. like. So Rick, um. This is a, uh, when you relieve more stress than you have, you mm -hmm. overindulge in your vice. Wow. And you're going to make a bad call due to it. Uh, the, the mechanical choices you get here is that you can uh, take a rash action, which means that you're going to reduce your stash by four, but I don't think we, we have that much coin mm. yet. Uh, or you're going to take two debt. So you like take a loan out. Mm -hmm. um, alternatively, you can big talk, which is like bragging about your exploits, and you will take plus two heat. Mm -hmm. Or you can be lost, which means that your character goes on a bender, and you can play a different character for this session. I think I'm on a big talk, yeah. Yeah, I think that sounds right. Um, so I'm just going to... Uh, pull up our faction sheet because that's where the heat goes. Where is it? I've got too many windows open in Roll20. Right? <laughs> there it is at the top. Okay. Uh, did I not mark your heat? Oh, that's right. You guys got a wanted lock in Rin where, the, where Warren is. Yeah. Um, so 
how do, talk to me about this uh scene the two of you um what the what the match looks like and how does it end in a draw okay i think it's we start with like I start with the weakest weakest monster because it's more like when where you have to spend points and 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 get you know you only have every, you have to construct your your deck as you go along. So yep. uh, I start with my weakest monster gets wiped out. I try to keep up, but I can. So eventually, I I have a a, a, a Sandarian uh, strong arm, and the only thing that Sandarian does strong arm does is it, it's basically a huge guy with four arms jumps on people. And grapples them so that you can have someone other character. So when that happens, uh, I don't know which character uh, you know uh, my, my opponent is, but they basically do a, a, an area attack that destroys both characters. So it's a draw because he couldn't escape from the from the grapple, and I'd have no other you know no other way to to, mm. uh, to proceed with the game because I spent all the points on the lower uh, point characters, and so. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So the, you, you sort of like try to Zerg rush him. Mm-hmm. And Edwin, what, what is your powerful monster that, that uh, sort of self destructs in this moment? Uh, let's call it the uh, Paladin of White Dragon. Aha, uh-huh, because I drew it. Uh, okay. it. It sacrifices itself for the good of my life points. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm imagining that Edwin has like these these cards that have, all have that sort of like noble old school fields, which are like oh, modeled yeah. after Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And then my master commander years. taps and destroys my entire <laughs> army to increase morale. Um, so Rick, how, how is it that you go about uh, bragging about your exploits here? Is this you like on a, a forum or something like an online forum? Oh yeah, because yeah, we maybe we like it. stop at a porch and we're doing it there. And during the meanwhile, you're just like, yeah, you know, remember that time I blasted that biker back on the planet we just left? That crime <laughs> totally me. Yeah, and no, actually, it has like you have leaderboards, you have local leaderboards, and you have sector leaderboards and stuff like that. So when you play, you have to play online because that's a, you know, part of the money is the people watch and gamble on it. So it's yes, like, okay. Listen. That went as well for you as that biker who tried to make that corner and actually ended up opening two more windows with his bike through two buildings, okay? So you don't do not try to outmaneuver. The Meanwhile, race. the entire time, Edwin's just okay. like... <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. All right, cool. Well, I will add two heat to you guys in the uh, Holt sector where you guys are now. Holt system, sorry. Um, because you've... Uh, spread the word a little bit that you that you might be on the run um actually speaking of going into port uh junior says uh at some point uh during the game um he probably talks to you kit because these two are in, super involved in their game and byron is too scary to talk to mm-hmm. um he says um uh, perhaps when uh the captains are done with their game we might make our way to jerick's junkyard uh it's off it, it, it's off the orbit of uh, voss and uh, i can make some phone calls and um get us proper papers to get on the planet um now kit my guess is that you have been to jerick's junkyard before if you're if you're a mechanic or an engineer you probably know this place. Um, uh, would, what do I know about it? Is it like it is a normal place it, to go? Um, it, it is like a, a hangout for people like you, definitely. Yeah. You know, like uh, and specifically you, Kit, but also like the crew in general. It's like a free floating mass of like ships and parts all welded together. Um, Yes, or connected off. by a magnetism and various cabling. Um, and if you're looking for equipment on the cheap, like this is the place to go, but it will probably be like missing pieces or unreliable. Um, Jerick, who runs it, is like a spacer who has sort of just 
collected things over his incredibly long life and it, it it's like a junkyard big enough to be like its own free floating in space uh space platform basically um yeah okay yeah that sounds good to me as soon as the captain sort their um shit out we can tell them that's that's the next place we're going maybe i can i can just put that into the ship's computer actually they'll figure it yeah, out sure. <laughs> yeah um and so you when this duel ends in a i think junior just sort of looks at you you both and it's like well then captain Sh- shall we be off? Ah, <sighs> yes. Set course. I need to shuffle my deck. Amazing. <laughs> um, now, uh, Kit or Byron, is there anything you guys want to do before you get to Jerick's junkyard? You guys can do your downtime there or elsewhere in in the system. Like you don't specifically have to be on the, this place if there are things you guys want to do. Um, but if you have things to do, like while the ship is en route, yeah, um, I want to. I want to craft. Um, I'm not sure exactly how this works. But mm-hmm. One of my items as a mechanic is I have a small drone. Uh, uh-huh. I want to um, add an upgrade to it um, so that uh, baits can communicate with it and talk through it. So if we go out on a mission, we have baits there with us, uh, AI. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to look in the book. So, mechanic items, the small drone. It's a small remote-controlled drone with cameras. It may be able to carry something light. Um, cool. So this drone, did you did you make it yourself or did you buy it? Um, I think I made it probably over time. Okay, so what what, what does it look like? What's, is it like a, a, a ground drone? Like, does it walk or does it fly? No, it definitely flies. It kind of like mm-hmm. hover flies. Um, yeah, it's got like maybe like four little rotator spinny things, so it can kind of go straight up or down. Um, but mm-hmm. it does have like legs, so it can walk. It's a little clumsy walking, so it mainly flies. But, okay, uh... <laughs> yeah, cute. And do you have a nickname for it, or is it just sort of drone number whatever? Uh, yeah, I think it's drone number whatever. But as soon as um, if I this upgrade works to have Bates installed in it, I'm going to call it Bates, and it's going to, yeah. like, personify Bates, the AI for me. Yeah, fair enough. Um, now, let me quickly look at the crafting rules, because I think this actually might be a long-term project rather than a, okay. a craft role specifically, because crafting is sort of more for, like, designing new things, which is sort of doing. Let's, um, But I'll, I'll look at the rules, because my, my memory is that the crafting process is sort of more involved than I think that this needs to be. I think this is like a fairly achievable goal. Crafting. During downtime, a PC can craft if they have access to the required materials and tools. Uh, to craft something, you must know it's schematic. Some items, like common gear, may have schematics that are easy to find. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, discuss with the GM if you know it already or if you need to acquire it as an asset or if it requires a job to get your hands on. Mm-hmm. Craft, you spend a downtime action and make a rig or hack roll. Uh, and you need to get the quality of the lo- hmm. what? Yeah, I I think this sounds more like a long term project because the the reason why is like when you craft something, there's a series of questions that need to be asked, and the first two we can do with fairly easily, which is like what is a device, what does it do, and what the what's the quality level. But then, um, then we have to answer the question of like what complexity do do we have to overcome that keeps it from being widely used. And I don't think that's the case here, right? We're just we're installing an AI into a drone. Yeah. So unless you want that to be particularly unique within the system, um, I think we can do this as a long-term project instead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, however. Okay. So. Um, for a long-term project, uh, 
you describe what your character does to advance the project clock and you choose one of your actions. So I think in this case, you could be either rigging, hacking. Do, do you have some idea like what this looks like, how you're in, installing uh, baits? Um, yeah, I guess, I guess it would take probably either sounds right. Right, I'm probably going to have to like work with the hardware, but I, in general, I think most of it is going to be software. Um, yeah. So um, hack is probably the majority of it, but a little bit okay. of rigging. Cool. Then what I'll do, I'm going to say that this is a four-step clock, and I've created it here on the page for you, and I will name it um, installing uh, drone baits. And you guys should be able to see that now, just above the start answer. So, uh, yeah, roll roll your um, your hack for us. Now, you you can like with any other roll, you can uh, lobby for extra dice here. You could either push yourself, which is to take two stress. Um, Um, and there, yeah. uh, for, for an extra dice, you can also, or, or you could, uh, devil's bargain. Um, Ooh. Could, uh, if I ask for devil's bargain, do I have to do it or, you, uh, no, I just, no. I'm just curious what, what it would be. No. So, so a, a devil's bargain, either I can propose one to you or you can propose one to me. Um, and, uh, if you accept it, whatever the consequences that is like, you can't resist those consequences like you can with other roles. But like if I, if the devil's bargain is, you know, Bates is going to turn evil or something like that, uh, that will definitely happen, right? It's not, it's not, it is a foregone conclusion if you, if you accept the bargain, but you uh -huh. do not have to accept it just by, you know, uh, uh, just because like uh, you asked to, to hear what the bargain might be. Okay, so um, just to, as a quick refresher, um, mm -hmm. how many, how many? If I succeed on this, it fills in one. Uh, no, so it, uh, so unlike um, so downtime rolls uh, are you, you aren't standard action rolls. You won't have like consequences attached. Instead, they're sort of scaling rolls. So depending on what the highest dice you roll is, you will fill in more segments. If the highest is a one to three, you'll get one segment. On a four or five, you get two. On a six, you get three. And if you get two sixes and critical, you get five, which would be enough to complete it in one go. Okay. Um, then I think I'm going to push myself um, for two mm -hmm. stress to roll a third die. Now, I just want to check something because I haven't run a, as much scum and villainy as I have uh, base blades in the dark, but I think there is a rule that any downtime action, if you involve one of your friends or contacts, that you get an extra dice. Um, I think I don't think anyone would even be around except for what uh, who's the guy on board, Jonathan, because um, the captains are off duking it out. And, um, I mean, I'm on I'm board, sure. but I'm in my uh, my quarters, so. Yeah, and I I wouldn't like go bother you with this. <laughs> like, I'd just be um, like, you're doing a shit. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I, it could be one of your uh, like characters' friend contacts. Like, you don't, they don't necessarily have to be on the ship. You could be like, you could make a call to someone and say, "Hey, I'm working on this thing. Do you know anything about this?" Okay, sure. I'm not yeah, sure maybe who... I'll call uh, Nisa. Maybe she was a previous employer of mine. Maybe she knows about this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, cool. So I think we, we're in, like, we, we come into the, the engineering bay and we see you um, tinkering on something. And, uh, and I, I imagine, like, the shot, we hear Kit talking and we assume that she's talking to herself until we hear this other voice. What, what does Nisa look like when we see her on like the, the glowing screen on your console or whatever? Yeah, um, Nisa, let's make her a Xeno. Um, oh yeah, sure. She's, uh, yeah, she's really tall. She's got kind of a, like um, greenish skin. It kind of looks like scales. 
and mm -hmm. uh, um, she's got kind of like hair that looks like dreads, um, but it seems to actually kind of be moving a little bit. And okay. uh, yeah, I don't know. And uh, her hands are webbed. Actually, sure. Cool. I'll write all that down. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think we're, like with the, the content of this conversation, uh, interesting to the crew or whatever, it probably has a bunch of space jargon in it. And she's just like, "Yes, try connecting this part to the to the discombobulator over there." <laughs> oh, I see. I see what you're talking about. Yeah, that makes. Sense. <laughs> but isn't this going to short circuit when I, you know? <laughs> Uh, not if you add this line of code, blah blah blah. Ah, that's great. Yeah. Um. So, so that'll get you an extra die. Uh, you can still push yourself as well for 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 a second bonus dice if you want. Uh, no, I think I'll go with the three. So I All click right. hack and I add one yep. die. Yep. And yeah, it doesn't matter what position and effect are because this is just a a fortune roll. Um. Yeah. Okay, and so. Is it not submitting? Okay, there. I think I think it just went. Right. Yep, brilliant. Okay, so you got a five, which means we're gonna uh, tick this clock twice. So yeah, you're you're about halfway done installing this thing, and I think we also hear uh, Bates chime in, and he's like, "Oh no, I don't think I'm. I'm. You're gonna need uh, some some extra uh, information here." It, 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 it's far too uh, far too uh, simple and pedestrian. Uh, I'm a very complicated being, you know. <laughs> um, does my ability tinker? Um, it says when you work a oh. clock with regular hack, you um, get plus mm -hmm. one segment. Would that apply it here? Sure, it sure does. Okay, cool. So that, uh, that will bring it up to three out of four. Uh, you could, in this case, then, if you want, spend a cred to uh, upgrade your result from a five to a six here, which will complete the clock in one go. How much cred? I think I have one cred. Sure, I'll do that. All right. Um, so yeah, I think that like what we see is you know you ordering a bunch of extra parts or whatever to pick up at Jerex, and then next time we see you with this drone, it will just be complete. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, Sorry to uh, take a lot of time here, but uh, no, yeah, no, for no, the second the downtime activity, um, yep, for sure. what can I do with the Urbot? This is definitely yeah. something I'm, I'm obsessed with. Good. Yeah, good question. Um, do you want, you tell me, I mean, like at the moment, you don't know about it. Uh, so if you wanted to like start another long-term project to like investigate the, this, the, the cube, uh, that would that would be relevant. Or okay. if you don't care about what it does and just want to start doing things with it, you could you could just do something. You you could start a different kind of project. Or um, or I mean, like, is this an indulge vice role? Because I know for you, like, your fascination with artifact is part of it. If you wanted to indulge your vice, you could by by experimenting with it. Um, I so guess I'd... you only have two stress at the moment, don't you? So you might yeah. be risking indulgence. As well. Um, yeah, no, I think I'd want to start, uh, interacting with it and try to see if there's a way to ideally communicate with it. Cause I have some semblance of intelligence, right? Uh, yeah, well it, um, you heard it sort of like make this sort of whistling thing and then, um, uh, Bates seem to be able to interpret that. So if you want to like learn how to speak to it, yeah, that could be a project. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, this is going to be a, a, a bit of a tougher project, but you know, like you get, uh, you you will get what you want out of it. Now, is it a six-step clock or an eight-step clock? I'm going to say six. I don't feel like it. It doesn't feel quite like an eight-step to me. So I'm going to create this um, eight-step clock here, and we're going to call it Learn How. No, let's let's just call it Cube Talk. <laughs> I like it. All right. Um, 
I believe there's somewhere on your sheet you can create a clock for yourself as well if you want to keep track of it uh, separately. Yeah, at the bottom right of your sheet, you can click oh, yeah. plus add, and it, and that will just help you uh, keep track of the clock separately if you like, because okay. we we may jump on and off this page, but um, I will keep it. I, I will keep it on the screen where I, when I can. Cool. Um, so, what what action are you rolling here to start learning this uh, this droid language, this Urbot? Yeah, I guess I could see it as study, or I could see it as a tune. Um, yeah, they, those both make sense to me. Um, it could a, a tune. A tune would be. A tune is very specifically like to do with the way, which is something you're not super familiar with, but you okay. could ask Byron about it. Maybe he knows something about how to attune to ancient or artifacts. Yeah, I think I think my relationship with Byron isn't at that level yet. So maybe okay. I'll just try study. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, so similarly, if you have a friend that you might involve here, uh, Bates will certainly help you, but I don't think he counts as a, like a contact. Oh, you know what though? Like you guys, you guys paid to have that AI install, right? Like that was part of our ship creation. So I think Bates sort of is a crew member as far as things go. Um, this is the question and I, I will pose it to the entire crew. Do you guys consider Bates a member of the crew? I mean, I was sent along to overview Bates as a member mm -hmm. of the crew, so... Yeah. I see, yes. Bates yeah, is more a member of the least... crew than I am. All right. Yeah. I'm actually going to add them... So I'm for it. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a plan. I'm going to add them on the ship as... as a contact okay. obviously they are part of the ship but uh, it means like if you do a downtime role and involve baits specifically you guys will will get that extra die okay cool i'll go ahead and do that then so study plus one for baits Nice, that's the six. Cool. So we will um get three segments on the cube talk clock. Sweet. Um yeah, and so I think like uh while you're while you're working on this drone, we also see uh the cube sort of like floating around you and just sort of like making these uh strange sort of R2D2 whistles. <laughs> And Bates is like, oh, yes, that's a good idea, actually. Uh, <laughs> um, do you have a name for the cube beyond cube? Uh, not yet. Okay. Um, I think Bates says, uh, I think Bates literally just calls it cube and, and says, ah, oh, yes, cube has uh, suggested that uh, we might be able to do this, this, and this, and that would help me. And you know, like we we sort of uh, uh, see you uh, working with Bates to, yeah. to start understanding how Cube communicates. My um, eyes are like really wide, but like I'm trying to play it off like non. But yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, um, I think at the end of like that that sequence, the camera sort of pans over, and we see Junior like sitting in the corner of the engineering bay. Uh, with a book in hand and and like trying to look like he's reading the book but as you start like talking to Bates in the cube he like looks over and he just like 